Greetings and welcome to LGR and it's time to take a look at some audio stuff which is something I don't take a look at very often on here. Um, maybe I should do that more often because as a YouTube producer and a guy that does a lot of gaming and stuff, audio is pretty important to me as far as being able to not only communicate with people that I'm playing with, but also just to uh, do videos and streams and anything like that. So. Aver Media has uh, once again sent me some stuff to cover, and they've always sent me video uh, AV like uh, capture products in the past. Well, this time they've sent me a microphone and some speakers. So uh, they're they're part of their new line of I don't even know what, but they're doing them. So they sent them to me. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the Aver Media Aegis something or other. So this is the Aegis Gaming Voice Chat microphone. And uh, they are charging $99.99 for it, so right at $100 US dollars. And it is supposedly designed and also named after Zeus's shield. They sort of have this Greek theme going on. Uh, that's not exactly what I was taught Zeus's shield looks like, <laughs> but they have some artistic license here, I suppose. In a way, it looks more like a, a Transformer Millennium Falcon. Hasbro got a hold of some Star Wars properties and just went crazy. Uh, either way, it's an interesting look for a mic, that is for freaking sure, and so is uh, the packaging design itself. There's like this weird little, I don't even know what that's there for, but it's there, and it's it's a slant, and it's red, so it intrigues me. Kind of slick package, I suppose, not, not too shabby. So they got the thingy right there, that is the mic we'll look at in a second, but it also comes with this. I don't know uh, <laughs> what the heck you'd want that for, it's like a case badge opening up, and the... Uh, first thing you'll notice here is <laughs> this is the highest quality micro USB cable I have ever seen. It's got like the braids and everything going on. The ends feel like they're not going to snap off their gold, I guess. That's a pretty substantial cable. I am impressed right off the bat with this thing. Uh, there's some documentation, which you don't really need. I mean, it's seriously, there's just a simple little piece of software that you download. We'll get to that in a moment. And then, ooh, really loud, uh, there's the... <laughs> It really wants to stay in there, doesn't it? There we go. Then we have the Aegis microphone itself. And uh, yeah, it's, it fits right in the palm of your hand, although ideally you won't be holding on to this. You just sort of plop it on your desktop or wherever you happen to be doing some gaming on a PC. And uh, well, there you go. The quality is not the greatest, especially like this volume knob is really... Uh, chintzy feeling and loose it just sort of wobbles but the the, the rest of it is okay I guess it's, it's really really lightweight I think it's about four ounces or something and uh, it does have this nice rubbery underside here which keeps it from uh, moving around on your desk which is good because it is so lightweight but when you do plug it in in fact you see it glowing red there that's uh it's making if you do any kind of noises that are loud enough to make it peak uh, the volume peaking and crackling and stuff, it'll do that. So, yeah, that's good. I do like that a lot, actually, because I don't want to be looking at a recording program while I'm uh, gaming or streaming or whatever. There's also this kinetic muting lever. <laughs> it's just a friggin' mute button. But uh, I guess it's kinetic. I, I don't know. And then it turns off the light or what right here if it's muted. Kinetic muting lever, that, that's, that's the silliest thing I've heard in a long time. Uh, the only other thing that's really on here is uh, you have this DSP on and off, which I will explain what that is here in a moment. Keep that in mind, because it's one of the, really the only things that sets this apart from anything else other than the shape. So, it features two unidirectional mics, one right here, one right here. These are condenser mics, they're supposed to pick up anything to about two feet away. And I'd say that's about right in my experience. And then there's this thing that you install once you plug it into your computer called the Aegis Voice Engine. And this is really an interesting piece of software. It's kind of similar to what the Microsoft uh, Connect and Connect 2.0 do on the Xbox uh, 360 and Xbox One consoles, in that it's supposed to eliminate background noise and the noise from your games so that you can just speak into the microphone from you know a couple feet away or whatever, but it won't actually pick up your game noise or the noise of your room, it sets it up and runs through a little process to listen to your room and your speakers to make sure that it can do its thing, as long as that DSP button is switched on. How does it work and how is the quality of it? Well, 
Okay, so what you're hearing right now is me talking through my normal gaming uh, microphone solution, which is just a Steel Series headset, really basic thing. And uh, here we're going to switch over to the Avermedia Aegis starting now. So this is what the Aegis sounds like, and um, well, <laughs> it's it's not good. Uh, let's put it that way. It's um, this is in the DSP mode at the moment. Uh, if I switch modes, it just it sounds pretty much the same, and. Um, that's, uh, that's really, this is what you get for $100. Let's go ahead and try it out with a game. Okay, so just as a test here, I'm going to play some Duke 3D with a bunch of noise. Uh, and it's set to just play it at my normal gaming volume, so that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, I, I guess we'll see how that goes. Oh, this is, this is baby Duke 3D, forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, plenty of noise. Let me kill myself here, and that should be a lot of noise because there's like subwoofer stuff and, bah, and music and. All right, Let's see how that goes or went. Well, yeah. So this is a friggin' disappointment. Um, I'm sorry, but for a hundred dollars, I just cannot possibly understand why. You know, just why? Like, this should be a whole lot better. I'm I'm not expecting this to be like you know studio quality mic. Like I'm using a a Zoom H2N over there. I've got a just a blue snowball. That's fine. Those are for recording you know videos like this narration. But this sounds as bad as a Kinect or like a headset that came packed in with any number of my consoles. This is a hundred dollars. I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't. I'm sorry. Nope. That thing is out of the question. I can't possibly recommend it. Let's take a look at these speakers, though, and see how well they fare. And of course, this is going to be a little harder to do since they're speakers, and obviously you can't hear what they sound like exactly because you're not here with me, but uh, I'm going to do the best I can. All right, so let's move on to the Ballista Trinity Gaming speakers. Yeah, so it's continuing that whole Greco-Roman naming scheme, and it's named for, of course, the Ballista Weapon. Uh, the Trinity... I don't know. I don't know what that means. It, there's other speakers in this set. These are the $129 version, so $129.99 is what you're going to be paying for these. There's some that are cheaper that have slightly fewer features and maybe slightly less speakers. I don't know. I don't have those, so I can't really compare, but uh, they come in a box, so that's that's good. It's just a friggin' box. There's nothing really special here. Uh, opening the front flap, or the top flap, really, when you're about to take the speakers out of there, you get some instructions right there. So, uh, as for the look of these things, well, <laughs> this is, these are absolutely absurd. I, uh, you know, if I were like 14, these would be the coolest looking things I've ever seen. I mean, if you like this kind of thing going on, it's, it's like, again, with the whole, like, transforming kind of motif. What, what is this style? There's so many things that have it now. Like, you know, you've got, uh, gaming mouse input devices and, like, microphones. Look, what is this? This is weird angular. I mean, you see it in games like Destiny, too. In fact, the subwoofer looks like something from De looks like Ghost from Destiny had sex with a companion cube from Portal and then just, like, got painted by some kid in 2003. Like, this is the silliest thing I've ever seen as a, as a speaker system, but maybe that's just me being slightly older and curmudgeon -y now and liking very straightforward-looking speakers, but whatever. Another thing that's not really an issue and sort of is a personal preference is the quality of these cables. And maybe, maybe that's not personal preference. Maybe that's just me speaking from experience, but these don't really seem like quality cables at all. And uh, I do like that the ends here on uh, these are going to be RCA, and that's fine, but they these are like the cheap kind. <laughs> they just look like they're just going to fall apart on me. I don't know. But the quality of these speakers themselves seem to be... Uh, Quite nice, actually. I, I don't have any real problems with these. These, you get uh, 14 and a half watts each. There's nice rubber feet on the bottom, which is good. A lot of speakers that I've had for computers don't have rubber feet, so uh, they stay in place. And they have a little spot there that you can uh, hang them on your wall if you so desire. The subwoofer that looks like a weird amalgamation of sci-fi themes is a six and a half inch sub. You get 48 watts in this model, and man, this thing yeah, this packs a punch. 
uh, absolutely blared at full blast and all sorts of the basiest like music and games that I could find and it, it performed wonderfully. I didn't hear too much noise, so I'd say it performs pretty well for my limited expertise. So everything that you have plugs into this central control box, which is quite nice actually. Uh, many of the others that I have had have plugged into the subwoofer or the back of like the right speaker and I don't like that when the volume and like all these inputs and other things are on the back of a speaker somewhere. It's just inconvenient. This you can just plop down somewhere like a small little piece of AV equipment. And actually I have quite a few things that you can do on this little box here. So you've got knobs for volume, treble, bass, and uh, input selection as well as some stuff to uh, plug in some other devices here. So you've got headphone, microphone, and a line out. And then on the back, of course, you have a, a possibility for a microphone out and auxiliary in. So that's pretty handy, actually. There's also this thing. <laughs> it's called the assassin button. Oh, my word. What? Whatever, man. Gamers or something. It's supposedly cool. Uh, not for me, but yeah, this assassin mode is literally just a half mute button. Not really a button that I see myself ever using, since you can just friggin turn the volume down. So as for the quality of these things, how do they sound? Well, sound reproduction normally is uh, quite fine. <laughs> the, the subwoofer sounds nice and bassy and boomy and all that, and the speakers, they sound all right too. There are a few issues with this, sadly. So there's a faint hiss whenever the speakers are powered, and it's even when the volume is turned all the way down. And there's some really severe crackling with this volume knob. Again, what's with these cheap volume knobs, Avery Media? Come on now, listen to this. So yeah, there's, there's an entire section of the volume knob that just sounds like garbage, and that is really most unfortunate. Beyond that, it's fine, and it's nice smooth volume adjustment, everything else sounds really good, but maybe I just have a defective unit here, I don't know. But dang it, for $130, I shouldn't be having to deal with it. such a weak knob and these other slight inconveniences and technical issues. I want this thing to be solid, I really do. I, I, like I said, I don't mind the sound quality. It's quite nice, actually, but everything else, I don't know, man. All right, so the speakers, they're not that bad. At least these, they're not that good either. And for $130, I expected a lot more. Dang it, Avery Media, <laughs> what's with your, like, shoddy products recently? Because, seriously, the last uh, video capture thing you sent me kind of sucked. Or at least the software did. Um, since there's been a software update for that, that has been addressed. It does work a lot better than when I reviewed it, but it launched in a horrible state. Uh, this thing, I don't know uh, if this can be upgraded through software or not, because the quality is just... No, it's unreasonable for the price. It'd be fine if it were just a $10 headset, but it's not. It's a $100 thing that sits on your desk and, you know. The speakers, you know, eh, they are what they are. The speakers, I don't mind them uh, when they work. I just wish that the quality was a little bit better as far as the build quality and the things like the hiss. The hiss bothers me more than anything, to be honest, and uh, I can get over the volume knob, sort of. I mean, I've got shoddy volume knobs on my Logitech speakers, too, and I still use those all the time. But that hiss, I, I can't... No. Uh, so maybe go for some of the cheaper ones. These still aren't bad speakers on their own, and if you like the look of them, there are the cheaper ones that I think are $69 instead of $129. That might be the better deal, uh, but I don't have those. Maybe that's even worse. I don't know. Either way, uh, totally average products here, and uh, that's that's that. Uh, thanks to Aver Media for sending them to me. Sorry I had to sort of take a dump on them, but you know. Start making better stuff, <laughs> and I'd be happy to, you know, call it like it is and say it's better. But until then, see you next time.
And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me cover more products, both new and, well, mostly old, a lot of old stuff is on here because that's what I like to do even more, uh, then you're on the right channel. May as well check out some of my other videos linked to here or subscribe to be notified when there's more in the future. And there will be more. More coming every Monday and Friday. And you can also check Twitter and Facebook and Patreon if you'd like to do social things and support the show other ways. And as always, thank you very much for watching.